Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes4sale.com. So that's flutes the number four sale.com flutes for sale.com just be sure to use that code tfc for all those perks and a little bit of that does go our way another sponsor as well ourselves we have a store if you haven't noticed yet we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com we have some shirts and posters and things like that over at teespring so you can definitely go there and get some merch posters whatever you'd like that we have it will be there you probably notice it under our videos if you're interested be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com that helps us out immensely so yeah on with the show Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Emily. Hi. We just had a little audio problem, but it's all good now, hopefully. Yeah, so to, it's been uh, another month, another month of uh, this weirdness and practicing here at home and making videos here at home. And hopefully everybody at home has been practicing and also just staying, you know, safe and all that. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, what type of flutes to buy, particularly there'll be a question about uh, particular types of flutes. And we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, what lessons are like online with you in your studio and what that's like a little bit and then also your questions um, on the second half of the show in about uh, 15 minutes or so so yeah how are oh. you everything's good everything's good yeah that's good cool mm -hmm. and how's it oh yes i'm good oh yeah i'm good as well yeah that's is that great. what yeah 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 yeah, yeah that's what i asked. <laughs> sorry because i was also reading the questions because this is a live show as well um if you go and find us live on uh youtube every last sunday of the month uh come and join us there leave a review also on apple Podcasts. that's help us that's out a lot i know a couple of you have already done that and uh that goes a long way as well for us over on apple podcasts so yeah uh, leave questions for us in the comments. We'll try to pick a couple. If we've missed some or we didn't see it, please repeat it again. Let us know also where you're uh, watching from or listening to. And yeah, so first question we got here was a couple weeks ago, or not even we maybe a week ago. Somebody in the comments and on the YouTube channel was just saying that um, their daughter uh, started following us and plays flute in middle school. She's nine years old, and she's just finishing flute first grade, uh, all with good grades she uh loves it and she would like to buy her first flute and she's thinking between two yamahas the yamaha 212 sl so a 200 series and a yfl 300 series uh, she's aware about the product differences and stuff uh, but they're still uncertain of which one to choose uh and how What's can the, like does a 300 series have uh, open holes yeah they all 200 can have an option for open holes okay. and a 300 too uh Specifically, like, there's just metal differences. Like, there's nickel silver or non-silver in the 200 series. And then in 300, you start getting up to some silver components. And also, I think the head joint can be silver. Like, you can come... I think it has... Uh, Yamaha has, has several different Yamaha head joint series, like an EC, AC. I know they change them sometimes. But there's several different cuts that you can also get. And those head joints are pretty interchangeable. To those systems so you have to check with your your dealer yeah i guess but because like yamaha still is yamaha yeah. so a head joint should fit exactly come on to the next like the 
<clears throat> yeah. And like price differences. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And like the price differences are um, a bit different. Like it can range obviously because in different places it's different prices. But, you know, you can find a used 200 series for three to $500 US. You can also find uh, new, but uh, I think it's 700, I think, uh, brand new uh, with open holes if you can find one. And then 300 is a little bit jump higher in, in price there. But what you're really paying for for 300 is better components, better uh, components that are also um, going to last longer, also um, can be repaired. Unlike uh, 200 series, sometimes those um, components are more, they're student flutes. So they're meant to be brought back every semester or every year to the repair so technician and see? take things out and stuff like that. So. If you want something that you're, you know, you want to be a little serious about that can last you at least, you know, a 300 series can last you forever, you know, with good repair technician and taking good care of it. I know people who play on 300 series as an orchestra too, so, mm-hmm. you know. Usually people like to upgrade when they get to a certain level, yeah. but My point it is, all depends yeah. what you're going to do with it. But what you're saying is that the 300 would last, oh. could last a lifetime. Could last a lifetime. A 200 series could too, but in a way you then maybe want to kind of, invest in a little bit better mechanism because you will kind of out out fast <laughs> or out yeah, do yeah, yeah. the the mechanism and the 300 can keep up with with the best of them and including keeping with um a good technician uh, to help it repaired it really goes a long way and then pads too and all those things all those things are a lot better i would definitely go with 300 series any 300 series that if she's has serious, open holes yeah think she's gonna play and keep yeah it and- open hole See if she has an offset G or an inline G. Make sure you get all those types of things. Try a couple of them of the same series too. I always encourage that. Try one or two of the same model. You never know what can totally. sound a little Sometimes, different, and uh, you never know. So that could be fun to do and try. And uh, yeah, like it's going to make her happy. It's going to be a happy little flute. And usually Yamaha is pretty good for like if you ever want to change your head joint or have multiple head joints, like a wooden head joint on there, it could sound cool. Their measurements are very, very like uh, standard. standard. I would say very close to a type of standard. And yeah, so that's really interesting. It's so cool when people are going on a journey for a new flute. And, um, you know, when you go and find a flute or you can go and try flutes like Flute Center New York, you can go and try a bunch of them. You can also ask them to uh, send them to you. Yep, if you're exactly. And it's worldwide. So you can contact them through, you know. They have student flutes. Their inventory is always growing on both ends, both the, the you know, the new, mo- and used. new and used and uh, high end and low end. They're always adding more to their to their um, to their yeah. uh, system. And I think now they moved into a new building in, I think, Hell's Kitchen, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there. So it's a much bigger facility. So now they can accommodate uh, more flutes. Also, uh, now they have sheet music there. <laughs> you can get sheet music there. It's a whole store basically cool. which is really cool yeah and if you buy your flute there you can use our code That's tfc right. and uh, you get longer warranty yeah. and you can try more flutes but also it helps us out so thanks to everyone who are using our code oh yeah thank you so we, much we get we so really many appreciate of them. Yeah. it and um yeah and their website did you say it? Uh, flutes for sale flutes the number four sale.com yeah so yeah they're they're all flutists there um if you contact them through email or call them or check out, make sure you mention that code TFC. Then, you know, they we really, you know, you get a lot of perks. You get to have try up to three to four flutes up to 10 days, um, which you wouldn't be able to without the code. And um, other little perks like that, extended warranty. And uh, they're very good with all of those things. So I really wish a, a wonderful journey for that in uh, that adventure of trying flutes. Uh, yeah, so, and then for you, we were going to talk jump to... Music lessons. Recently, we've been getting a lot of people asking for online yeah. flute lessons. Yeah, because it's easier it's for easier people. It's easier for people now, and people are kind of getting accustomed to, like, Zoom and all those types of things and Skype. And yeah. um, We've been doing that for a while already, though, which is great. We have yeah, we've had it for... Maybe three years. At least three years, yeah. Yeah, with a probably. Lot of, yeah. And, yeah. Could you explain a little bit about, like, how people are perceiving it? How, how are you enjoying it? What has changed um in regards to sort of teaching because like you don't have that physicality n- close to people as you yeah yeah so um it it works very well the important thing is that uh, your internet 
uh, run smoothly like usually people either are close to their connection or put a physical connection right. in their computer so that it's uh, fast but like even yesterday or two days ago i gave a lesson to someone in france so it's still like pretty far from and Quebec. yeah in chicago too yeah but like that's even further and right. like it was totally fine like yeah. as long as you have enough light on your face so i can see so that i can see your mouth yeah and um, you place the camera so I can see like your mouth, your fingers, yes. the whole flute. And um, like it's just organizing your stand. With yeah, not a low angle, you know, keeping it the camera like but face, like usually eye level. I tell people like, yeah. oh, I don't see you. Can you move this? And, yeah. um, you know, but some people say like I, I talk to other flute teachers who are a bit picky and say, oh, you don't hear the sound as well with the microphone or blah, blah, blah. I can hear the sound pretty well. Yeah, so yeah, I've like heard it. it. It's pretty okay. Most people have simple setups, and even if people have elaborate setups, it sounds even better like sometimes. Even with a normal webcam or your tablet, or yeah. the microphones are okay. I know yeah. it's compressed, but you can still hear if there's a lot of of air in the sound, or like you can still hear colors. Yeah. And we have okay speakers too, yeah. so that's not really a problem. The only difference I would say is that when I uh, teach in person I get to uh, play with the person at the same mm -hmm. time so that's a bit more difficult to accomplish with online uh, so what I do usually is that if I want to um, work in that manner I just uh, record myself let's say I want to practice something at a specific speed and my student has an issue following it I'll just record it at that speed and send the send the file mm -hmm. And then they can hear the metronome and the their piece that they're learning and they can play along. And in a way, it's almost better because then they can, between two lessons, they can practice with their recording as much as they want. So it's just about adapting. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I think this would be helpful for my student. How can I adapt it to online? Uh, it's cool because it makes you be more creative. And like even in person, sometimes now I use some things that I learned Mm -hmm. while teaching online i use it in person as well now because i'm like that's very efficient let's use that and um i use more like imitation but imitation is proven to be a very efficient way to learn music so i play i play a phrase you the student can um repeat after me and stuff like that but it works well because like also if someone's not aware that they're doing something i see it i hear it i can imitate them they look at me like oh i do that and then they notice oh yeah i was mm -hmm. doing that and um no it, it works very well yeah it's and, uh, it's fun yeah most people you know the delay is very minimal or none almost and uh, as long as you know i always say be by a window or somewhere very bright and uh if you can have the a wired connection to your internet that's always the best because it just makes things a lot more smoother or if you have Wi-Fi, go near the router in the same room and try to do that if you can. That always helps. But um, yeah, and it's uh, pretty, pretty amazing in that front for, for lessons. And people can uh, contact us if they ever want lessons. They can have a single lesson or have a couple lessons or be part of the studio, whatever you and want. Or not rigid. Like when people take a no, bundle of four lessons or eight lessons, whatever, mm -hmm. they don't have to take one a week or one every two weeks. Like they can. Yeah. I have students who do that. Right. And I have students who say, I take one and then they email me yeah. back when they're ready for another yeah. one and we reschedule the next one. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to... Yeah. Uh, and also what I do, because when I teach on in person, I usually have a little... Each student has a little book in which I write what they have to practice for the next lesson so that I remember and also it's easier for them. Mm -hmm. But it's very easy online. What I do is that I send an email. Right. I just send an email and then mm -hmm. the next week I just retrieve that email that I sent so I know what the student yeah. had practiced and then I just update it for exactly. the next yeah. lesson. So there's not a huge difference. No. That's interesting. So like yeah. you can't touch people like you can't say oh do you uh, mm -hmm. you can't do this to say uh, lower your shoulder so you have to say mm -hmm. and if the person doesn't do it then sometimes a visual help like you're doing this yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know or something like that mm -hmm. yeah it works well no oh, that's cool so you can email us you know uh, info at the flute channel.com if you ever want to be interested if you ever want to have lessons or interested in 
uh, doing that. And it's always a lot of fun seeing the people playing from all over the world. And we get yeah. uh, always interesting and very, very like nice. And everyone's been so nice with the lessons and uh, people uh, want to learn. And that's always a good thing. And, you know, with the timings that we are now, we have to kind of do it this way for a little bit. And maybe it'll continue after because, you know, uh, why not? Yeah, because like now the world is getting smaller with with all the technology mm-hmm. and you don't have to take lessons with the person that's closer to you yeah. you can take lessons with anyone that you want to. exactly so yeah. that's yeah, great it's training. a freedom yeah. that uh, mm-hmm. we didn't have before no exactly totally i remember like um maybe 10 years ago maybe more Yeah, a bit more than 10 years ago, it started those types of things. But in universities, some universities had like one room that was dedicated for that with specific cameras and mm-hmm. made it so fancy. But really, <laughs> it works well with a yeah. webcam. And I guess also the technology evolved. Yeah, maybe like 15 years ago or 20 years ago, I remember hearing about that. Like, oh, Like between uh, some students in Montreal and teachers in Vienna and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. But now it's for everyone. Yeah. So we're going to answer some other questions now. Uh, questions from the chat and stuff. Uh, Surian, Isaac, he wants to know um, if we want to, if we could do a review of our fans playing uh, like Ray Chen does. But we've already done that, actually. And I sent a little link in the comments there. And get professional opinions for self tough flutists. We did do that once, and we were actually going to do another one. So this is also a call to action to all you flutists that are listening live, and people who are listening after as well. Um, leave your um, clip of you playing, uh, either down in this video chat in the comments. Um, leave a link to your YouTube video of what you want us to look at. We're going to do it probably this week. We have a couple, but we would like to have some more. And, and you then, want to be, you want it to be a YouTube link. Yeah, we want it to be specifically a YouTube link because it's been hard to get uh, files uploaded and emailed to us, and the emailing thing doesn't work. So really, just YouTube um, or Instagram if you want to send it to Instagram. Instagram is also a good thing too. If you go follow us on Instagram, DM us there with your link, and we'll try to get all that uh, all that going. And we're gonna do uh, episode number two of that soon. I know we got a pretty good response with the one before. And you can play any instrument. You don't have to just play the flute. You can be any instrument. I remember last time we got a violinist and some other stuff too as well. Some saxophone? other players. Saxophone. That's true. Try also to take a, a visual point that I can see you. Oh, yeah. Like from the back is a bit more oh, but i can still hear it's okay yeah because it didn't pur- so it wasn't the purpose for us to sh- for us you know it was probably some member there was a saxophonist that shared a video but it was like an examination and yeah, so, so that, yeah. i understand it doesn't matter yeah, yeah, it doesn't i'm matter. just saying if it you would do help that maybe it's helpful yeah um yeah but like that was fun it do. was so much fun yeah and we really want to do more of them and um definitely in this uh leave that uh, under the video here the link and uh, we'll definitely add it to the list and we're going to try to do it this week and then uh, today we're going to release a new video about uh um test pieces and stuff like that so that's gonna be cool right after this video so be sure to check this out if you're listening to this uh later go to the youtube channel and uh watch their new video that we're going to release out about uh Test pieces and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's no due date. Somebody just said, is there a due date for the review? Nope. Just leave. Uh, even if you're, even if it's like months ago, like if you're listening to this podcast or watching this live, leave a video, uh, a clip of your, your playing and we'll add it to the next episode, you know? Yeah. Cause we'll make yeah. more episodes. Exactly. So even if, if we made a new one and yeah. we're going to make another one and another one. Exactly. So just send Yeah, links. exactly. And maybe so. people who already sent links that were email and stuff, if they can resend it. In. Yeah, if you've already sent it through email, we might have lost it. We might have not gotten it for whatever like reason. Maybe a YouTube link or a YouTube link would be helpful. Or um, Instagram. Or said. Instagram, yeah. Instagram, DM us. Follow us on Instagram and then you can DM us. I think you even DM us without even following us. But why not follow us if you're DMing us on Instagram, you know? And uh, yeah, any other little questions we got here? I saw one before. Some people are trying to get flutes. I like your songs. A lot of people. Oh, that's the person we answered the Yamaha question for, which is great. And uh, is Emily French? Yes. Well, no, no. I'm, I'm. What are you? I'm Quebecois. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Quebec in Canada. We have there you go. French 
here. province here in Canada, mm -hmm. Quebec. Yeah, people are watching from so many places. Oh, here we go. Uh, do you have any tips for bad flute days? Oh, wow, we did a bad flute day video a long time ago. I remember that. Like when your tone sucks and your vibrato sounds like a sheep, I sometimes feel like I'm a flute king and sometimes I feel like a noob. Oh, okay. Okay, well, it, maybe it's a bad day. Maybe you go take a walk and you come back. Mm -hmm. But also what I like doing when that happens is practicing just going shh in my flute. Oh, yeah. Like don't sound. I, yeah, I'll like just give an example. Cause Try not to do it right in the fear. microphone. Yeah. Oh, with the flute. Yay, flute time. It's right over there. Just quickly add to that. Sometimes I like playing other flutes. Like I like playing penny whistle and all those tin whistles. And that sometimes makes me reset my embouchure. And then oh. I play again. And I'm like, oh, I sound a little bit better this time. But yeah, give like that. Like that. Let's say I'm... <laughs> but like... Mm -hmm. If you're practicing a piece, you can use, you can tongue as well. Like you can oh, learn. Yeah. The right. You can put the metronome, mm -hmm. practice, learn like that. And it still helps the sound because it works on the, you can still feel that your airstream is, is equal. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, um, <laughs> that your airstream is equal and all that stuff but you don't stress about the sound or the vibrato so it can give, give you a little break of over thinking mm -hmm. about that and also what i like to do when my sounds is not good is to practice with um the piccolo ah. i play my piece on the piccolo yeah because the piccolo you need to support you know so once you're done with the piccolo you take your flute and the support is there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Everything's smaller, so you really need to focus the air. So I like using the piccolo. Or what I also do is I play while singing. And that also helps with an open throat and everything. I think if your vibrato's in the throat and your sound's not good, it's probably because your throat is a bit closed. So yeah. practice singing in your flute. And we have a video about singing in your flute if you don't know how to do that. So you can watch that video. You write mm -hmm. probably singing in the flute and you'll find it. Oh, yes, that's right. Singing and then the we also strength. have a couple of videos about how to improve your sound. And I talk about it in one mm -hmm. of them, singing in your flute, mm -hmm. harmonics, all those mm -hmm. things. And like developing that constant sense of knowing what your flute sound is, even without your flute, just knowing what you kind of want to have all the time is a good goal. And your body and everything will want to recreate those things with practice with yeah. all those things it's all about getting an association of a type of sound that you want and also the um, link in your brain between that sound and the physical yeah. feeling of it and using the mirror sometimes to uh, anchor those physical mm -hmm. uh, sensations that you have while you're playing and the sound is good and using all your senses to kind of really anchor it in your body so that at one point you don't really have bad flute days anymore right but yeah. i remember being in that oh, situation yeah. oh totally me too but now i think my flute it usually sounds pretty yeah. good it's very rare that i'm not happy yeah. with the sound and i find that it happens a lot when when you're just practicing for me it was when i was just practicing with no real goals for a couple months just practicing for practicing say no concerts coming up no nothing just practicing every day and then finding having bad tone days but i always found that the next day my tone got better yeah you know what i mean like everything got I think it was just maybe, like you said, it's a brain link thing that's happening. Maybe being too picky or being more, you know, it's so many different things. Yeah. But now I'm less stressed about it when it oh, happens. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm not really yeah. nervous. Well, it's going to get better. Yeah. And sometimes I, I do a little bit of sound exercise, leave it there, go for a walk or do something else, come back to it. No, mm -hmm. it's back now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but overthinking about it. So yeah. if you have to learn a piece... And your sounds not good. Maybe just practice with doing the shh, like I said before. Yeah, it's true. It's a good way to still learn your fingerings and all your articulations. Mm -hmm. And it's also practical if you want to practice in the evening and uh, you don't want to wake up people around you. No, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, we have I'll still... Yeah, you yeah, put that away. Uh, but, yeah, we still have a few uh, minutes left. We, yeah, we still have a few minutes left. So be sure to leave some questions if you would really want. This is a great time for that. Uh, I know you. we also released a video, well, three videos this past week, or the past two weeks, which has been pretty cool. The uh, video about uh, breathing in 3D and breathing in 3D and um, 
What was the other one? The tonguing one, which is doing very well too. Those like sort of like tutorial, but also like sort of like a workout, so to speak, you know. Yeah, because I do the whole exercise because I yeah. thought if I just explain it, but oh, yeah. I don't do it, then maybe people, people will not be sure if they really understood it. So right. if you, like an example is worth a thousand words. Yes. So I just did the whole thing. Right. Exactly. And those have been doing really well if you haven't seen those. And if you're, even if you're a beginner or even if you're advanced, it's a really good, I find it to be a very good workout. I like trying doing it every couple of days and sort of doing it, well, doing it the way that you do it on there. And it's like, and it's time. So, you know, you really put that time in when you practice. You're like, oh, I did 15 minutes of tonguing. I'm check mark, you know, like, and all those types of things. And then personally, I don't yeah. do all of them each day. Usually I alternate. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. So exactly. Yeah. Ah, Odyssey of Ascension. Thank you for twenty dollars on super chat. You rock. Wow, thank you so much. My flute. What's this? What is he saying? Let's check out what you're saying. Hi, my flute, a Yamaha two series, does not have a B foot. How important is that? Playing for about nine months now. Okay, that's an amazing question. I was actually thinking about that recently and watching old videos of like Ron Paul and other musicians, other flutists, and some of them only had C foots. So I wouldn't worry too much about it because most repertoire i would say 95 percent does not have that note uh yeah. low b because low b started what with wc first yeah, time i think so it was one of them because it didn't exist before. no and i think the only person that was kind of doing that was really bum and like doing making it himself like making these extensions and doing weird things but in reality because nobody like, was writing for it correct me if i'm wrong but like up to Mozart, it only goes to low D. Yes, that's correct. And then they added the foot, the C yeah. foot. So yeah. So all the 19th century and then beginning of 20th century, they yeah. added the B foot. So yes. you would have music composed after. Yeah, 1900. 1900, something yeah. like that. And not all of them have a B. Yeah. So. And like getting one, like buying it. Some people buy the b foot and have it made or they have those like yamaha has b foots you can buy separately you can also find them used but you have to make sure that it is that fits fit, the model yeah. and everything but with use you get it way more cheaper and there's stuff like that but in reality like when the time comes i think you can most likely get one if you need it but in reality you won't need it necessarily like, Even sometimes in in music that has it, it they put it in parentheses yes. and they Good have point. an alternative note. Yeah, alternative S note. So yeah, and some people I've seen an experiment done with flutes that are C foot and flutes with their B foot, and it was a long time ago. I remember uh, reading about it, and people were th uh, saying that the C uh, the C foot flutes were projecting more. Yeah, I remember. Were more brighter. I was. Um, for a summer, I studied with Galois in a, in a summer academy uh, for a week or two. I don't remember. He had three foot joints because if he played music that was Mozart and before, he didn't even have the low C. Yeah. Because he said it projects more. Why mm -hmm. would I have more metal and more everything? Mm -hmm. Like if I don't need it, mm -hmm. he would use that foot joint. And then he, if he played yeah. music that had a C, then he would put the c foot joint yes. and then he had the b foot joint for <laughs> other repertoire mm -hmm. like personally i don't have the same budget so i have one foot joint but yes yeah so there's a mm -hmm. there's an advantage to having a smaller flute it's I guess. so true yeah exactly and like there's even special cases that you like i think you just maybe you just mentioned that there's special cases too that can fit both so you, you buy a case the case is gonna be maybe 50 to 100 dollars to buy a case that has a little slot for a C foot and a B foot, you know, like the, those all, all those options are available. But I wouldn't, like I said, worry too much about it right now. A lot of repertoire has been written. You'll, you'll change flute, yeah, maybe. and then yeah. maybe you get a B foot because yeah. this way you don't have to think about yeah. it. But I'm not sure I would change flute for that. No, I wouldn't either. But if you change for other reasons, because you're like, oh, I want the flute of my dreams right. that I'll all keep then, my whole life yeah. and all that stuff. Then you have a good B flute, you know. Then you have a good, like I mean, a good B flute, like a good secondary flute oh you keep your 200 as a secondary yeah flute yeah. yeah you can do that yeah exactly or you can just give it, it going to repairs and yeah some places do exchanges it's true i don't know if, well yeah i don't yeah you can do an exchange it's true yeah so yeah well thank you for that uh hopefully the answer your question a little bit oh, okay so he said great info yeah oh it's our pleasure thank you for 
for that super chat that's those help us tremendously as well Thank that's always so good to have those extra things because then we can buy sheet music if we need to get sheet music or if we need to you know uh, develop a, a new thing you know that adds to giving us more spare time to uh, do this uh, project that we're doing for all of you uh let's do one or two more questions um chelsea wants to know i've been using and this is a good question actually i've been using flute tunes to find music recently great website we love them uh but I've been having a bit of trouble finding pieces at my level. I've been playing for about four years. Do you have any ways to find music that suits your level? Yeah, you know, flute tunes, it's a great resource, but they they categorize in the in, as easy, intermediate, advanced. So those are broad, broad uh, levels. And you don't really necessarily know, maybe intermediate covers like five grades. We just, you know, the, but mm -hmm. you don't know that. So I would always encourage, and I think that's what... Um, the video we're going to release today sort of kind of talks about that uh, music levels and grade levels and types yeah. of pieces so you can see progression and a lot of uh, like rcmp or rcm rcm <laughs> i don't know why i always add a letter rcm or abrsm abrsm trinity all those types of uh, they leave online yeah. their syllabus their syllabus so you can check for free yeah what you're comfortable playing and you're like oh i'm a level I'm grade three, so yeah. you can practice in All there. And when, once pieces. you're comfortable with that, you can go to grade yeah. four. And that can help you... Um, Assess your level better, I guess. Yeah, and choose what to yeah. practice, which scales to learn, all that stuff. And also there's methods, like there's our flute method, but it's really for beginners, but I'm working on a more intermediate. Yeah, the intermediate one, yeah. Yeah, so uh, when that will be released, it's very progressive and everything comes... At its own time, you know, it's yeah, based yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, pretty well, you know. But I think those yeah. those exam things, Th yeah, they're good. And they're it's good. like, yeah, and those acronyms, like I know a lot of people get very, very confused when we say those ones. Like they just, it's just like, yeah. And it's hard to find the, the syllabus. One is the RCM, the Toronto Conservatory, is Royal also the Conservatory of, of Music. So if you write on Google Royal Conservatory of yeah. Music, you'll yeah. find it. Yeah. And then you but go even... syllabus flute or syllabus woodwinds. Yeah. You should find that. Yeah, you should find it. But I think what I'll do eventually is really put the lists on our site so that people know grade levels and stuff. Uh, because I've we've had I've had a lot of people email us and message us saying they just can't find it, and some people can. And okay. so, um, but yeah, those we are great lists. We might make our level. own. That would yeah. be we could make our own list assess the yeah with grades like so you can assess yourself you know oh and that's be such like, a oh, good I idea should we should do uh, that tafanel and gobar ej1 at this speed and these scales like we could make something oh yeah like for that. scales but i think people like are really trying to find pieces yeah the, yeah all the exercises that you should work on at, during yeah. that grade and yeah. then we could do that. Yeah. And I know IMSLP is a resource for sheet music, like public domain sheet music, but it is very intense. It's based off of like Wikipedia. So it looks a bit intense for most people, but they also don't have a, and I wish they could add that. And I know people have requested it, a uh, level, like they show what level it is in ABRSM, RCM on the side. You know, if it's a piece of music, they say, oh, this is a grade five. This is a grade six. I wish they would add that. But and that would help tremendously for people to search because you can't search by level of difficulty. Maybe also on Musigy, we could have more like um, technical stuff and or make grade things, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, booklets and stuff like that. Yeah, little it would be our own system though. You yeah, can print that's and a <laughs> that's a that's during the business side of just, the conversations. It's just very yeah. fun because yeah. like people ask questions and it just makes me think. Yeah, oh, yeah, maybe totally. there's something here we can do to yeah. help and make things yeah. smoother for yeah, people. Yeah, smoother for people because people really want to assess and also where they are. It can go high pretty fast if you buy a. Uh, Tafanel and Gobert and De La Sainte and all those things. Oh my gosh, they add up. Yeah. But you have them forever. Yeah. But, you know, it's a... Uh, but if you're just learning and not wanting to do uh, actual RCM examinations or ABRSM examinations, you know, using that information is very valuable. And, like, we can find... We can we can definitely do that for you. We can try and figure that out and get that going. So hopefully that answered your question. Nice and... Nice and... Nice, great question. Thanks, Chelsea. And we'll do one or two more questions. Let's see. Oh, Thomas Smith, a new patron. Oh, thanks. I will go check that out later. Thanks for being a patron over on Patreon. Patreon yeah. is uh, still is going, and we love the going there. There you can donate uh, up to as little as $2 a month, and that gives uh, 
access to us so you can uh, definitely ask us questions we try to um uh it's a direct line to us basically we we yeah. usually go to the people there first if they have questions about their flute playing and we answer questions there uh every every day i check it out every day and i really appreciate it um but you have a question i think is a pre-professional flute with silver plated body a haynes q altus 907 preferable to an upper level step up with silver body like an azumi az3 and Sonare. okay Oh, the question between Azumi and Haynes. I always uh, think about that. For um, Yeah, th they're usually the. I think Sonari and Azumi are the same company. I think they're all part, but I'm not oh, yeah, sure. They I think. Were I think. Is, I think they were Sonari bought. is Powell. Yes, Powell that's right. Is a big yeah. Now. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Like, okay, so pre-professional flute, silver plated. Silver plated is always great. Solid silver is always. Better. I think the 907 is solid silver, but I'm not sure. Because they uh, say step up with silver body. It's prefer yeah. No, no, preferable to an upper level, which is the Azumi. The Azumi and the scenario are the are the higher levels yeah. compared to the others, right? So Yeah. Huh. So Haynes would be silver plated, but Azumi and Sonari would be silver body. So probably silver body be better. Yeah, silver body usually can go uh it's usually much brighter and easier on mechanism um when you start plating you're plating over another metal and the other metal might not necessarily be like as strong it could be a little bit softer it could be so many different things um but i would always say go to that upper level one if you can afford it because that will definitely like last longer but try those out like try the azumi and try the scenario try one or two of them of each and really get a feel like of the same model like because mm -hmm. it really will um make a difference i wouldn't go if you had those options like between a pre-professional and these ones go with the upper level because the upper level s is yeah. pretty those are really good flutes i think you have i think you did review an azumi once yeah it was good it was good but like yeah i think hmm. if, if you can afford a better flute you should yeah because when you change, you lose money because yes. you're gonna sell used and rebuy maybe new and mm -hmm. so maybe it's cheaper in a way instead of changing and changing and changing yeah. while you're improving. If you have the money now mm -hmm. to get it now and right. then just go with that flute, yeah, forever. But, yeah, exactly. But if you're a patron over on Patreon, like you just said, you are. I think. Yep. And we'll uh, actually di deep dive a little bit. I'll deep dive in there a little bit there for you and uh, see what the exact because i don't have the full specs and like me trying to review all the specs in my head is a bit difficult but uh, i will definitely be in touch with you on that that'd be so cool and yeah let's see is there any other questions we got here Daniel does uh, that for flu piano i don't know who that Henley is does that for flu oh henley piano and violin i use their website to see whether a piece i want to learn is in my level yeah henley yeah they have many things that abrs and level yeah henley's a way yeah that's a great tip i'm definitely going to uh, share that around uh henley as well that's so smart yep that's great that's amazing I love the community. They all share this out. And, yeah. you know, like we always get so much things coming through the pipeline. So we miss things. And it's always good that you guys are sharing such great uh, tips. So, um, yeah, that's, I think, going to be it for the rest of the podcast. Um, thanks, everybody, so much for uh, taking part. Like I said, if you're interested in lessons, so go and uh, email us at info at the flute channel dot com for online flute lessons with uh, Emily. And we'll definitely be in touch with you you can do one lesson you can do a bunch you can do as any as much as you wish and we always appreciate your uh, your help with that and also be sure to go if you're looking for a flute as we've been talking about buying a flute go to flute center of new york and uh at flutesforsale.com or call them or email them and mention our code tfc either at checkout or as you're when you're talking with them and they'll give you the options to try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days and that works worldwide and you can um try them out and then see which ones you want and bring the other ones send the other ones back and um they've been really great uh, supporting us and you've been really great supporting us buying a flutes and they have the world's the largest selection of flutes so you're going to pretty much get every single choice you can get to great quality flutes and that's always a good thing and also our store if you want to buy merch you can go to uh, 
store.theflutechannel.com for our, our flute fingering chart poster, our shirts. I know we've been selling quite a bit this past month with shirts and stuff, and we really, really, really appreciate that. So cool. And uh, for our music courses, our online course itself, not the ones that are through Skype and stuff, but our actual uh, 15 beginner lesson course. Is yeah, it's over. a flute method that has like a book and video lessons. Yep, exactly. It's a whole package. So you can have, you know, 15 like lessons, the uh, first lessons that you would have. Oh, no, yeah, 15 first lessons that you would have with Emily. Uh, very, very, we're, it's a very, very good product. We also have some sheet music on there too. Um, and that's at musogy.com. So M U S O G Y.com. And there you can um, order that. And it's quite um, beneficial for people who are on a budget, and it's uh, it's yeah. really great. We offer really a really good service there, and I think that's it. There's other stuff. No, I think it's all good. But yeah, thanks everybody so much, and uh, thanks everybody for the super chat, and thanks for everybody who's been answering us questions. We will see each other um, next uh, uh, next month on the last Sunday of June. And also be sure to leave a review over at Apple Podcasts. And if you want us to also leave a uh, video of you playing so we can do our playing uh, yeah. video, our reviews. Totally. And if you're playing, that'd be great. Leave it down below in this video or on the video that we actually did the first episode on, which we'll leave in the uh, description as well. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>